Take three. <laughs> Check. This is writing an outline. <laughs> writing an outline is a useful skill in pretty much any class. It's kind of a pain to learn how to do, but once you know how to do it, you'll find a use for it literally everywhere you go. An outline is the skeleton of writing. It's the basic facts that hold up a piece of writing. Outlines do have main ideas, subtopics, details about those subtopics, titles, and basic grammar. What outlines don't have are totally correct grammar, sentences, paragraph structure, or correct punctuation. Remember in an outline we're going for information over grammar and punctuation and all that stuff. Now, the question I always get is, do I have to spell it right on an outline? Um, only if you want to be able to read it on your outline. It's important that you be able to get the information. So whether or not you put a period at the end of a line, doesn't matter. Whether you spell the word you're trying to define correctly, does matter. So here's a paragraph. Joe had a dog named Sven. Joe and Sven were best buds. They went everywhere together, except for school. Sven had a place set for him at the dinner table and a bed next to Joe's bed. Sven was the best dog a boy could have, and Joe was the best boy a dog could have. That's kind of a goofy paragraph, but it gives you enough information so that when I can carve it up like this, I can take it apart into its skeletal parts without the grammar, without the paragraph structure, without the sentences. Here's what we need to know from that paragraph. The title is Joe and Sven, because that's what it's about. Joe had a dog named Sven. That's the main idea. That's what this outline is built on. Joe and Sven were best buds. They went everywhere together, except for school. Sven had a place set for him at the, at the dinner table, a bed next to Joe's bed. Sven was the best dog a boy could have, and Joe was the best dog or a best boy a dog could have. The first thing you've got is your title and your main idea. Joe had a dog named Sven. The next thing you have are your main ideas, which inconveniently are not numbered. So let's number them. When you set up your information in an outline, you are looking for organization. So if your main idea is a number, you probably want your subtopics to have a letter, A. B. C. And D. So what you've got is your outline called Joe and Sven. Your main idea that this outline deals with is Joe had a dog named Sven. The subtopics that go underneath that main idea that add detail are Joe and Sven were best buds, A. B, they went everywhere together. C, Sven had certain things. And D, Sven was the best dog a boy could have and Joe was the best boy a dog could have. To add a little bit more detail to it, we are not just going to use subtopics. We are going to give those subtopics a little bit of necessary detail. So now we need another divider. So we've got our A, B, C, and D. But we don't necessarily need a ton of detail to separate these few ideas, these details that go under the subtopics. So we're going to use a little dash. <coughs> Just so that in your head you can see, oh yeah, this is something I need to pay attention to. But it's not necessarily anything that's a huge deal. So, topics, the point for outlining. The first way to use this is a graphic organizer. 
you can work your, out your main ideas and details without having to worry about spelling, sentence structure, and all that junk that goes along with it. You can say, my first paragraph is going to be about this, and then these things are going to happen. My second paragraph is going to be about this, and it needs these to make it through. The second thing you can do, and to me the most important thing you can do, is when you're studying in a nonfiction topic, like social studies especially, like science, even reading, you can use this instead of to build up on later, you can use this to cut down the information you have to study. When you guys study for, say, a science test, what do you read? I mean, what do you go through? Science. You go through your science textbook, right? Yeah. Or your science study guide, right? Your science study guide's got a lot of stuff on it, correct? Yes. Think about this. When your teacher gives you a study guide, does it look something like this if the number, if the letters were questions? If I was going to give you a science test about living organisms, number one, animals. Question, 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 question. Or fact, fact, fact. Fact. And underneath certain facts, there would have to be extra details to explain it. When I taught social studies, I used outline form all the time. Main idea. Civilizations of the Nile River. Topic one, Egypt. Topic two, Nubia. Underneath Egypt, I'd have all kinds of different stuff. Government, religion, culture, buildings. So it would be Egypt, government, religion, culture, buildings. And underneath those letters, I would have all kinds of details. So you can do two things with an outline. You can either use it to build up from, if you're using it for a graphic organizer, or you can use it to break down from, if you're using it to study something in nonfiction, or even if you're doing an AR book. If you have one of those short little like half point AR books that everybody likes to read at the very, very end, like five minutes before they're due, when your goal is to you're going, oh, I need 10 points, I need 50 books, please. If you take one of those little half point books and you divide it out like this, you're going to get to what you need much, much faster than just reading it three or four times. If you read it and kind of break it up into main ideas, you're going to get to exactly what you need and cut out all the fluff. And that is all. And we managed to make it through with nobody knocking on the door calling the room.